Anthony Joshua versus Tyson Fury. The deal is done, according to Eddie Hearn. They've agreed on the financial aspect of this fight. They're talking to broadcasters. And it looks like they're deciding upon a venue. Of course, for a fight of this magnitude, they're going to want an audience. And Eddie Hearn is indicating that it will likely happen, at least the first bout between the two heavyweights, in the Middle East. Now, that is especially interesting, but very understandable if you follow combat sports. <clears throat> but before I get into that, I want to digress a little bit, and I want to talk about the fact that we predicted that this fight was going to happen while all the Deontay Wilder fanboys and the new media or whatever they want to call themselves continue to get things wrong in an effort to pander to whatever it is that they're pandering to in an effort to quench their insatiable bias for whoever it is they're going for. And it's just a very weird situation. Look, if you guys want somebody to talk about the sport of boxing or combat sports in general objectively and you want to speak to other people who are objective about the sport, feel free to hit that subscribe button. Usually I tell you to do that at the end of the video. But, I mean, we keep getting this right and the rest of the new media continues to get this stuff wrong and I just, I don't understand what they're looking at. Um, it's become a concern to me and I'm sure to many boxing fans and uh, fans of combat sports in general. So that being said, that being said, they want to do the first fight, it looks like, in the Middle East. And, you know, if you're following combat sports, that's not a surprise. The UFC has been going to Yaz Island, which they call Fight Island now, in Abu Dhabi, in the United Arab Emirates, you know... <clears throat> I will say, you know, I'm from the school of thought, right? And not everybody's going to agree with me, right? But I'm from the school of thought, and I like to think this is a bit of immigrant mentality, and especially Arab mentality, um, because that's, you know, the part of the world my family's from. I'm from the school that believes that you should encourage businesses. You should support businesses, you should facilitate the environment for businesses to run and for entrepreneurs to create because these are the creators in our society, right? These are the, the, the innovators in our society. You know, you think Steve Jobs, what he did with the iPhone. You think of Elon Musk, what he did with Tesla. You know, you can, you can go on and on, Bill Gates and whatever. I mean, when these people, these innovators, these entrepreneurs are allowed to work in an environment that doesn't obstruct them, they, they change the world. And that is, <clears throat> that is a value that I've had since a young man. And that's a value that was shown to me and taught to me by my, you know, father and mother and their father and mother. And, you know, I'm sure that was handed down for generation since the beginning of civilization that was probably handed down and so it's <clears throat> amazing for me right to see a region of the world that my family had to basically escape because things had gotten bad for a while is now a region of the world that is pioneering i'll say it i mean i, I i'll just tell it like it is pioneering for the fight game and pioneering, I'm sure, for a ton of other businesses um, and, 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 and as far as a venue goes, right? I mean, Dana White, every time he talks about his experience in Yaz Island, you know, he couldn't say better things than what he's saying. I mean, I'm sure they've created conditions and an environment there that's so supportive of entrepreneurs and businesses and it's those environments that create opportunities. They've allowed Dana to operate. They've allowed him to give his fighters fights. They've allowed you know those fighters to make money and those coaches to make money and everybody involved to be entertained and to make money and to make a living. And that's why I think it's important. And that's why there's no doubt that Eddie Hearn is looking at the region as uh, <clears throat> the front runner 
in the Tyson Fury versus AJ sweepstakes. That's exactly what he says. He says here, uh, if you go online, he says the Middle East will be an aggressive front runner in this. He's talking about the AJ versus Tyson Fury fight. Uh, to stage this fight, you need significant government support. You know, and this is something that's very near and dear to my heart as somebody who's a promoter in the state of California, which I would argue is probably the most difficult state of any state in the United States to do fights. Um, Eddie Hearn goes on to say, you need someone who is staging this fight as a statement for their country. You know, <clears throat> it's so important, really, it's so important to support to support these businesses and to bring these events to your population, to your people, and, and all the revenue that comes along with them. So it does look to me that Eddie Hearn is going to be doing this in the Middle East. He did Anthony Joshua Ruiz too in the Middle East. I'm sure, you know, I, let me let me tell you guys, I'm sure they covered the tab for whatever his expenses were and then some in the Middle East. And they look at it, even if they lost money, which maybe they didn't, but even if they lost money, they're looking at this as an investment. And that, my friends, is an important mentality to have. In any business that you ever go into, you have to invest back in the business. You have to invest in the environment. You have to look towards the future. Don't be nearsighted. So that's, you know, that's looking like where this, this fight is headed. At least the first one Eddie Hearn wants. The second one at Millennium Stadium in the UK. No doubt it would be the biggest fight in UK heavyweight history. And perhaps, perhaps the biggest fight in heavyweight history, period, right? Um, we'd have to wait to see what kind of numbers it does. But I'm sure there are, there's going to be millions of people tuning in to watch that fight when it happens. But I do think... That fight in the UK where Anthony Joshua was already selling out stadiums just absolutely demolishes at the box office with a guy like Tyson Fury on the other side. So <clears throat> my question to you guys, my question to you guys, you've heard my thoughts. What do you think about this fight um, happening in the Middle East? Articulate your thoughts below, uh, you know. I want to say, obviously, I'd rather see it done here in the United States or in the UK because I feel like both guys are from the UK and, you know, you'd probably get more fans and, you know, they want to come see their hometown guy fight. But I still think it's impressive. Um, so so tell me what you guys think in the comments below about this fight potentially happening in the Middle East. When you get done doing that, hit the like button, the subscribe button, the bell notification icon next to it. Join Knucklehead Nation. Get your fighters rep gear in the link below, man. Look at this hoodie. Clean for the winter time. We also got shirts, masks, tanks, whatever you want. Support the channel with that. And of course, if you really want to support the channel, hit the join button below the $5 tier by paying that every month, $5 a month. You help me not only build this channel, but build the only kickboxing promotion that matters, fighters rep promotions. And I'm hoping we'll be back in 2021. But, you know, I, I can't say with confidence uh, that we absolutely will, at least not in California, because unlike, unlike my brothers out there in the Middle East, um, this is probably the most business hostile state in the United States. So I'll leave you with that. I look forward to hearing what you guys have to say.